This morning, I'm fortunate to have my guest. His name is Tim Rode. Tim is the uh, creative force behind OneLifeFullyLive.org and is a rare individual who walks the walk of what he teaches. He got off to a slow start in life, but uh, found his passion selling real estate and after 18 years, sold over 2,500 homes. And uh, like I said, he's created the One Life Fully Lived. Uh, and he's, uh, well, he's, he's our guest today. And Tim, welcome to the program. Hey, Darren, thanks so much for having me on, man. This is, uh, this is the world I exist in, so it's always fun to uh, talk about getting life's goods and getting after it. Well, I'm excited uh, to talk to you today. Um, before we jump into our, our talk, if you could do my listeners and myself a favor and tell a little bit more about your background, I kind of very, we give a very skinny background there on you. Sure. Well, uh, I got off to a late start in life. I was the kid in your high school class that was throwing spit wads at you from the back. And I was looking out the window and just doing anything but but paying attention to stuff that didn't make sense to me. I did, why did I have to learn the periodic tables? So uh, at 25, I'm a part-time grocery clerk painting addresses on people's curbs to get enough money to buy diapers for my two small kids. And then I found my niche selling real estate. And as you said before, I, uh, I was really good at listing homes right and um, getting them sold, making a plan with the sellers, getting the homes sold in an efficient manner. And, and what I did best during this time frame is um, I still lived like I was a grocery clerk. So, so as my income went up from you know, 30 grand as a grocery clerk to 70 selling real estate, 120, 150, 200, 300. I still lived like I was making 40, 60, 80, 100. And then I took that spread, learned all I could about investing from, from basic books. And we should go into some of those later. And, uh, and just, um, took, took that knowledge and and while I'm selling real estate and know my town really well, I'm buying a single family duplex, land in the path of growth. Uh, we should also talk about my um, turning five grand into five grand a month in three moves. Um, and that's that's the kind of stuff you can do with real estate. They can't do with stocks. By the way, the stock market's done really good. I haven't been in that over the last 10 years. But, but uh, anyway, so, so late start, invested wisely, retired at 40, and now I get the goods in the woods, run a nonprofit, run an adventure uh, mastermind group called GoBundance, and have a really good life. And this is probably where a lot of you are trying to get to. So we're going to have some fun here today. No, exactly. Well, let's talk a little bit about this. So you, you were um, uh, the grocery clerk. You were uh, making it in real estate, and you continue to to uh, live like you're a grocery uh, clerk there, and uh, so you're definitely living within your means. Uh, what were the books that you were reading, or what was it that you that you found? Can you share some of the uh, uh, education that you were learning that kind of opened your eyes to real estate investing? Yeah, I really want to talk about what you just said there because that was the key to what I did. I did what most don't do. Most people, when their income goes up to 300 grand, they're spending 400 because they hit their, they bought the boat, the RV, the, all the trappings that Madison Avenue wants us to have. We were disciplined. I drove the same car for 10 years. I just didn't care. Look at my jewelry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I just don't care about anything like that, except now, if you saw my view, this is what it got me. I have this magnificent view. I've got, I live on three acres. I got a freaking mountain in my backyard. I've, I've, I've created this magnificent life, and it's because I had the discipline back in the day. And the books I read were The uh, Richest Man in Babylon, um, the, the Millionaire Next Door. That's defense. Vince Lombardi, defense wins championships. Um, and, and then, so, so what were some of the other ones? Uh, you talked about all of Kiyosaki's stuff. I played the game cash flow. And in the game cash flow, you get to turn your game board over. And, and One Life Fully Lived and GoBundance are all about teaching people how to turn your, your, ga your uh, game over, your board over, just like in, in Rich Dad or in Cash Flow. So, so uh, 
that was a very good thing to do is to play that game cash flow by by uh, Robert Kiyosaki and to and to um, learn the principles of that game of what's coming in what's going out what's left to invest and that was just a really good piece of this so you mentioned uh, the education and I think a lot of people get uh, all excited about the education because as you read it it makes sense and it's it's something that I think resonates with a lot of people uh, but when did it get real for you? I mean, you, you know, you, 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 you're reading it, you're doing the grocery thing. When did that, when did the investing thing get real for you? You know, the, the challenge is, is it not for a long time. It takes like, if you look at it on a graph, it's kind of, you're skidding along the bottom and you're having your ups and downs and you, you're hitting your singles and your doubles and buying a single family here and a duplex there and, um, and then, and then it took a while before the cash flow came in because the reality is when you have 10 grand a month coming in from cash flow, at the end of the year, you look up and it was 3,700, <laughs> you know, so right. it's, things are never as good and it takes longer. It, it's just harder than you think. So, so it's about knuckling down, playing good defense, knowing your ABCs, what's coming in. What's going out? What's left to invest? You listeners, do you know that? Do you know what it costs you to live? Do you know where your leakage is? When And, and that's the defense part. Um, a is what's coming in. B is what's coming out. And on that, what's coming out? What am I spending a month? And some of you listening would love to invest right now, but you have a lot of debt. And so, so you should get Dave Ramsey's program and learn how to pay off debt. And get that, and get rid of that debt, so you can get on the other side of the equation and start loaning money. And I want to give you another concept that fits right into where we are in this conversation right now, and that's horizontal income. Um, most people want a bigger paycheck. In our world, in the Go Abundance and One Life Fully Lived world, we're about um, multiple streams of income. We want horizontal income. Uh, there's a guy, one of our founders, David Osborne, he's probably got 200 paychecks coming in every month. I've got over 30. Um, and there's, and that's what we look for is how can we, um, remember the, the guy in the, the classroom throwing spit wads and looking out the window. I didn't do much homework either. And at this point I'm, I'm spending five to 10% of my time on my investments and 90% getting life's goods. And that's what happens when you when you do the right things early and it just kind of snowballs. So so, you know, here I am in my late 50s and I'm enjoying the fruits of what I did in my um, t late 20s, especially 30s and 40s. Actually. Uh, well, l let's talk about um, you and I had talked earlier, kind of, you know, what what could we call this and, and kind of the, the three steps was kind of what we came up with, three steps to financial freedom. Um, what would you, if you were to kind of line it out there, what, what would those, what are those three steps? Well, first of all, um, step one is awareness and getting in the game. Okay. So that was, let's look at, you know, my, use my story as an example. When I, uh, by the way, when I was the part-time grocery clerk and, and paint an address on people's curbs, um, I bought a, a, a mobile home for 20 grand and eventually sold it for 40, but turned it into a rental and then bought another house. So, so I was playing, I, I knew the real estate game early on. I love to play monopoly. It was always in my head. So, so step one is awareness and getting in the game and reading the right books and, and, and taking the local investors, taking uncle Louie out for lunch that owns five rentals, you know, and just see what are they doing and starting picking people's brain. This is lifelong learning. This is the stuff that matters, you guys. <laughs> so, so, um, step one, get in the game. Step, step two is, I think it's, it's, it's where you are right now, Darren, in, in our conversation. You own, you own some rentals. You're looking at doing some exchanges. It's, it's, it's becoming more of a master, okay, at what you're doing and, and mastering the game. And, 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 he's, and you talked about buying multi-units uh, um, multi and stuff like that. So it's, so it's looking at what's the next level. And in Kiyosaki's game, it's small deals, big deals. 
Okay. So, so, um, let me give you a really good example of that. Um, when I was selling real estate, um, I, I bought a single family home subject to off somebody that wanted enough money to go buy a new house. So I, so, it, so I gave them $5,000, which is what they needed. And our market was just starting to turn. This was around 2000 in Manteca, California. So, um, I, I gave them five grand and, and bought their house for about a hundred. And in the next year, it went up to like 120. We were, in a, we were just on a boom like this. And there was a commercial piece of land that had been on the market for like three years. I saw like three different signs there for 400 grand. And I always talk to the guy and he say, no, Tim, I'm going to go with a commercial broker. Talk to him, talk to him. So, so he's got the sign up against his house. And I, and I say, what happened? He goes, our deal fell through. I'm never selling again. You realtors, blah, blah, blah. Everybody lies. And I go, buddy. And, and I knew there was a, a Hampton Inn coming in next door. And, I, and, and he never changed his price. So I took off the commission, bought it for 360, took that five grand, sold that other house for, for enough to get 120 down on the 360, and sold that piece of land with an old piece of crap home that, that paid for it for the next two to three years. I sold it for a million eighty. So I took five grand, made 120, bought for 360, sold for a million eighty, and exchanged that for a building in Knoxville, Tennessee, leased to AutoZone, which is a pretty damn good tenant. And a 20 year lease, five <clears throat> grand a month income coming in. And I love that. And, and I'm paying off the loan. So I took that five grand and turned it into five, uh, five grand a month. And that's the three steps. I had the awareness to do it. I was a, I knew, I, I knew what was going on in my community. I'm, I'm very, I was very aware. I played the game full out. Okay. As far as, as far as the investing piece. And then I learned all about exchanges and commercial real estate. And now, um, I'm part of a syndicate called DAPT and we buy, uh, um, apartments all over the South. So, so th those are the three steps is, is, is awareness playing the game and buying the single families. And that's the hard part. That's the part where it, you're just grinding, you're hitting your singles and doubles and it takes years and it's frustrating, but, but it's just, it's just a focus and, and keep on learning more and mastering your trade. So we've got get in the game, kind of awareness, get in the game is one, two is become a master. And then what was, what do we call the third step? Exchange, exchange exchange into easy to operate properties and water ski in other people's wake. I, uh, I now I, I don't do any of my own investing I'll, I'll, except for I don't buy anything myself. I just invest in other people's properties. And by the way, the, the key to all of this, and I just want to say it again, along with that awareness is mastering your ABCs. What's coming in? What's going out? What's left to invest? I just can't say that enough because that is, if you don't have that mastered, you will never get to this place. No, I'm, I am uh, happy to hear that because that's, uh, <clears throat> my wife and I always joke that we uh, continue to live like we are college students. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned the used cars or, or, you know, keeping your cars longer and stuff. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of truth that I remember the first time I had a car paid off, you know, and didn't have that car payment going out, you know, and it's like, wow, what, you know, 350 bucks, what can I do with this? You know, and all of a sudden just, you know, that money starts adding up and then, uh, or getting a property paid off, you know, and you see the, the cash, uh, accumulating, like you said, it, it takes time. Um, right. cause I, 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 everything you've said, and I would, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm right there, I guess, two and, and looking to three kind of thing, doing the exchanges kind of thing. Uh, but it is a time, um, you know, the continuum is, it, it it's not, it, I think too often real estate gets portrayed as a get rich quick scheme. Absolutely. And, and what people hear is a story about how Tim went out and he bought this property for 360 and he sold it for a million plus, right? And they don't understand that you, the education and the time exactly. and, you know, all the, the backstory on that. And uh, while, I mean, clearly that's a, a remarkable story, uh, what was the timeline as far as from that's a great question, Darren. That was I, my I bought my first property in 1983. 
It was that that mobile home I talked about. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, the ad in the paper said absolute steal. Um, (laughs) Pay pay twenty, and uh, uh, pay pay twenty grand cash or twenty six, and we'll find uh, twenty eight. And we'll finance it. And Merv King from Save Mart, my who who is the d- general manager, loaned me the twenty grand, and I paid cash. And uh, and then and and it, you know he took out a note and he and think about that, guys. Um, think of why not be Merv King? Why not loan the Tim Road who comes to work every day is honest? And um, why not? Why don't you loan people twenty grand? He probably made eight percent. There's all these different games to play. And, and that's the single. That's just get in the game. Boom. <clears throat> you know? So, by the way, get a note, run their credit. Um, it's a business. <laughs> right, right. So uh, let me ask you again. So the, the, the timeline, you bought the, the, the one property with $5,000. Uh, from there, you, you uh, the property took off and appreciated. Uh, and then you, uh, did you sell that property or take a note out against it or exchange it to get into that, that uh, land? Um, no, the, the, I, uh, so I bought the property for five. I held it for a year and then I, I sold it okay. and then I bought the land, rented the land for two years. So that whole deal took four, four years before, you know, three sixty one a million eighty. However, that what's, what was really important about that was the 15 years of educating and getting to know my area and getting to know real estate cycles and getting to know when to, when to be aggressive and go after it and buy, buy, buy and, and, and when to, uh, um, hold back and when to sell. And we were fortunate. I bought a ton of real estate in Manteca between 97 and 2003. And I flipped about 50 homes from, 2000 to 2006 and right when our area peaked freaking sold Winthorpe um, <laughs> like 17 properties with 52 tenants right into our craze and bought that building lease to AutoZone and bought a um, and uh, building lease to Enterprise Rent-A-Car took back a bunch of notes on different properties and then we built our our three-story castle in the mountains above Lake Tahoe and I'm a skiaholic and I'm I'm just living a magnificent life that, um, you know, I'm very blessed to live and I'm very grateful. I hope that comes through here um, because I came from nothing and uh, had a different kind of education. And so and one thing I want to say that that's on my mind, the one thing I spent a lot of money on was my own continuing education. And right. and uh, that's why you should come to One Life Fully Lived this fall and get in the game and learn and be around a lot of masters such as myself. We have a lot of kids in their 20s that come to this conference that have eight, 10 streams of income. So, No, I, I'm, uh, I'm interested to hear more about that. Um, so the, the, I'm just looking kind of down my, you know, thinking through this thing here. Um, you know, you, your story, and again, I think the, the thing that I am, I uh, want to remind people, and I think the, you know, that you, you mentioned the <clears throat> the timeline of education, you know, that the, just the continuous, you were continually learning, continually learning. It wasn't always books, but you knew the area, you knew the cycles, you knew the people, you you invested in, in the relationships and just a uh, hyper awareness of, of what was going on in your area to where you, uh, and it, it clearly you think outside of the box. Uh, I think that was one thing, <clears throat> you know, you mentioned your, your uh, first deal or, or the deal where the uh, $5,000, the guy needed 5,000 so he could buy his next property. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I, that, that kind of parallels my uh, experience buying my first property. The, the seller needed 10,000 cause he wanted to go and buy another property. He didn't need the, the price he was asking. He needed the $10,000 right. and, exactly. and, 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 you know, it was just about trying to think about how to get into the, like you said, get into the game. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, we talk about paralysis by analysis and stuff. And I think, uh, like you said, even when you, you look at all the, uh, the income, you think, well, I'm making, you know, $10,000. And at the end of the year, it's only $3,700, you know. Uh, but <clears throat> that cash flow is just a very small piece of real estate, especially when you're first getting started. It's that the appreciation cycle that happens or the, you know, the rent increase or whatever that, whatever that, when you multiply leverage times time, 
uh, you know, that the, the power of that appreciation, that, that really the acceleration there that really gives you the opportunity to jump in and do these, uh, you know, exchanges and, and these other opportunities to invest, like you're saying. And uh, I just can't, you know, I, I don't know how to stress it enough for people to understand that it does take time. Uh, it, but it's, it's, it's not like just going to work every day and clocking in and clocking out and uh, getting a paycheck and, and, you know, hoping that you'll have enough to save uh, by the time you're ready to retire or live the good life. Uh, this can be a whole nother way to uh, supplement and actually, you know, really make, give you the life you want. Um, well, what we're talking about here, Darren, if you think about it, it's the business of your life. And, and if you, you know, if you know the book, the E-Myth, which is a great book to read, yep. um, it, it talks about, you know, running a business like a business and the, and the parts of that business. And, and if you think about it, um, not many people think of the business of your life. And that's, uh, and that's mastering the a ABCs we talked about and, and mastering your area. And one other piece of that is, um, finding models of people who are doing what you want to do in other areas. And I did that when I sold real estate, I, I found how are the top agents in the country? What are they doing to be most successful? And by doing that, by, by, um, educating myself on what's the best of the best doing, I was able to list 15 to 20 homes every month for like 18 years consistently and just focused on, it. I just want to list. I'm going to work five days a week. I'm going to list 15 homes a month, just boom, boom, boom. And then, and then, so, so when I transferred that over to investing, it was the same kind of thing. Just that, that focus of, you're still going to work in your day job, so you're juggling that, whatever that may be for you. I know you said it's selling insurance, so you're you're working that, and on the side, you've got this other project or game. I looked at it as a game of of how can I maximize as much income coming in every month with the, with the least amount of effort and still be the good family man I need to be and still um, take care of my body. Because what good does it do to get in your late fifties and have all this money if you're freaking croak? Yeah, no, exactly, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That, that, that's kind of the upside down uh, model there. If you if you get there and you got no uh, no health, that doesn't really do you much good. Um, let me ask you. So, if you could go back and change one thing, you know, looking back and or or tell yourself something different, uh, if you could pick a time before you got into real estate. Uh, is, is there one thing that you would go back and change? Um, well, two things. One is I never would have smoked cigarettes. I smoked cigarettes from 15 to 35 and I, I wish I had that one back. And if you smoke, please quit. It's just, you're going to wish you did. Um, and, and, uh, but, but, uh, I would say enjoy the ride more early on. I've, I've, I've done a lot of work on myself. And I'm a lot more calmer. I try to I try to go between ninety percent and thirty percent now. And I used to go at hundred and ten or zero. I my friends called me throttle on, throttle off. And and I'm just trying to not get as excited and and not get as upset, <laughs> you know, and, and just be or or not be as chill. And and so, so, um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm trying to just go there. They say the world goes at 77%. That's the wavelength where most people are. And, and I have a tough time going at that speed, but, but I try to tap into that as much as possible. So, so if I could go back, it'd be to be kind of more gentler and easier on myself and not quite as driven as I was. So Got it. But it served me well. Got it. Um, you mentioned your uh, mastermind uh, that you're in the uh, the Go Abundance. Um, can you cite some or kind of tell the listeners and give some insight as to the power of the the mastermind? Yeah. Well, first of all, that's another great book to read is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and that was the basis of our mastermind Go Abundance. It was originally founded by uh, David Osborne, Pat Hyben and myself in um, two th 
around 2004, we all came together. They had been a two-man mastermind group, and uh, David was abundance. Uh, he, he, I told you, he's got like 200 paychecks coming in. He just focused on making making more money and more income streams. Pat's as accountability. If you say you're going to do it, freaking do it. And I was more getting the goods in the woods and uh, what's it all about and giving back. So the three of us came together and just started going on mastermind trips and doing our our goals early in the morning, late in the evening. Where are you going to be in five years? What's most important to you? How are you going to make more money? How are you going to be a better family man? How are you going to you know, do the things that are most important in life? So people started going, wow, that's pretty cool. I want a piece of that. Hey, we're going to, you know, we climbed Mount Whitney. We went to Norway. We went to, um, gosh, Spain. We were doing all these just really cool stuff. Uh, tomato fight in Spain and walking the uh, the t- Camino de Santiago and doing just doing really cool stuff. So people said, um, so so it just started growing organically, and now there's about 150 of us, and we are just written up in Forbes, and it's just a really cool thing. Of I'm very proud of what it's uh, grown into, and one of the biggest pieces of GoBundance is um, genuine contribution, and. Uh, about six years ago, around the same time that GoBundance got started, uh, we started One Life Fully Lived, which is a nonprofit dedicated to helping people dream, plan, and live their best life possible. And everything we talked about is all the the um, basics of, of the stuff we teach. Like, like One Life is life's basics, figuring out who am I, what's my dream, what's my plan, how will I fund it, and how will I be healthy enough to pull it off. Abundance is a mastery level of all of this. We're healthy, wealthy, generous men who choose to lead epic lives. And, and we master our pillars of financial freedom, age-defying health, um, bucket list adventures, uh, extreme accountability, quality relationships, and genuine contribution. That's life at a mastery level. And, and so it's a beautiful thing. Abundance, we're out just crushing it, getting better and better. And then we're reaching down and helping our, our friends and families to lead a better life. And the coolest thing is we got this thing called Fan Abundance that is um, teaching the kids all of this. So we're teaching young entrepreneurs where, where most of the society said, oh, it's tough times and there's no hope. There's What are you going to do? We, we've got young guys. There's, this, there's these kids. They've got this thing called Success Beach. They're 12 and 17, and they got like seven streams of income coming in. They're more wealthier than the average 40-year-old. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. so we got some cool stuff going on, Darren. I'm very, you can tell I'm pretty proud of it. No, that's awesome. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was reading something the other day. I was, um, uh, I think I was looking on, was one, what is the average uh, 401k account, you know, for a, <clears throat> and I can't remember what it was, a 40-year-old or a 50-year-old, but it was, I was surprised at how little it was. I mean, it was just it was a, a, a surprisingly low number, you know. And and if you get teach some kids early on in life how to how to do it, I mean, holy smokes, you know, especially when they're you know not even essentially in the workforce, uh, right? That's huge. I mean, to start. Yeah. Well, what we're doing, like at our conference, we're having our conference in October, and we have people bring their families, and the parents go to the main conference, and then kids four to twelve. They, they like build an arcade and and so they're 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 creating stuff and then they have the parents at lunch play the games for as a fundraiser for one life and they and they and they also sell our one life gear so so they're learning and and they get some of the profits and they they so so we just have a really neat thing where we're teaching the next generation and everything we're doing we're thinking two generations so oh that's awesome that's uh clearly uh better than trying to fix yesterday you're looking forward i yeah. like that i like that yeah. um tim before we wrap up you uh you and i had talked and you had a um an offer you wanted to uh, uh mention to the listeners here and i want to make sure i i uh, express it right here the do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about that Sure. Well, uh, Darren's listeners, we have a uh, conference for One Life Fully Lived coming up on October 21st and 22nd in Sacramento, California. 
And it's two days to just <clears throat> um, work on yourself. Where am I? Th ask yourself the question, where do I see myself in five years? Where am I going with all of this? And and come, come into those two days with that. And then you're going to be surrounded with around 300 other uh, people who are playing their game full out, all at different levels of mastery of what we're talking about, but all uh, centered on how can I uh, make more money, be healthier, be more holistic, get more out of my life. And uh, we're, we're uh, not any political persuasion or religious or anti-religious. It's just people that want a better life. So, so uh, right now the the um, tickets are two seventy five. It's about to go up to three twenty five in August. For your listeners, we're going to have a special deal um, for two hundred and fifty dollars. That's our group rate. We uh, that's our group rate, and it's going to be an incredible conference, you guys. And and as I said, bring your kids, and you can check it out at onelifefullylive dot org. And, uh, and, and then check out the conference there and, and bring your friends, bring your family. If you have a team, I suggest you bring them. They, anybody you bring there is going to thank you for it. We have amazing presenters. Uh, in Philly, we had Jeff Hoffman. He's the, he invented the airport kiosk, and he's the founder of Priceline.com. He's a billionaire, and he hung out with us for two days. And just, you're having lunch with this guy. <clears throat> Wow, you that's know? awesome. And, he, and he's just sharing his heart and soul. And we have all these um, <clears throat> lady named Neil Godfrey. She was on Oprah like five times. She's, she's written 25 books on how to teach your kids about finances. And uh, she hangs out for two days. And just everybody's just there, um, as I said, working on their game. And, and, uh, and then just keep coming back year after year. And, and you see amazing things happen. So, No, that's awesome to be uh, amongst people or, you know, peers that are uh, similar goals or, or um, you know, everybody's kind of, what's that saying? You know, you're, you are the sum of the five uh, exactly. friends or, you know, five closest people you, you keep. And, and uh, just I think, you know, that's one of the biggest challenges is when you, um, you're trying to do something is it's easy to get knocked down because, uh, society and all the messages outside that are telling you oh, you're doing it wrong or, you know, that'll never right. work kind of thing. You know, you need to go get a better job or whatever, whatever you're trying to do that if it's against the fray there, that's, uh, it's important to surround yourself with, uh, like-minded people. So, yeah. And it's amazing. I, uh, at our event and I touched on it before, there's all these people in their, in their twenties that, that have, you know, they're, like like a guy named Sam Weigert, uh, he he owns a he bought his first karate studio at 15. He subsequently, I think, he owns three karate studios now and 12 rental properties. And he buys a new rental about every six months. And his model is he buys one with four bedrooms. He gets a good friend of his to manage it. That person gets free rent and just make sure and they take care of the three other tenants and just so he's so you know and and these are the people they're just hanging out there and and i could go on and on with different models of 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 young people who who when i first met sam he had two karate studios and i think one rental you know but but you know they've just that that was three years ago and and we're all just watching each other grow um people are doing like uh 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 Ultraman triathlons. Oh wow! <laughs> like, wow. A, like a group of twenty-five just did. You know, they're just everybody's just taking each other up in in all areas. Well, that's so. awesome. Sounds like you guys have a neat thing going there. Hey Tim, before we wrap up here, what's the best way for the listeners to uh, find out more about you or, or get in touch? Um, the easiest thing to do is just send me an email at tim at timroad dot com. Um, um. I love to hear from people and see what you have going on and and uh, but but uh, yeah please check out onelifefullylive.org um, take our roadmap uh, my one life roadmap the class you wish you had in school it's a it's a um, do it yourself course cost ninety seven dollars it teaches you our basics do that course come to our conference bring your friends bring your kids uh, if you're at a mastery level you got to be a millionaire. Um, check out GoBundance.com. That's our, our mastery level of all of this. And, uh, yeah, tune in. We got a cool thing going. It's a, it's a unique ecosystem. I think of us almost like a counterculture. 
<laughs> yeah. No, it's awesome. I, I, I'm uh, psyched to uh, learn more about you guys. And uh, it sounds like you guys have got it figured out and you're clearly living the life and getting the goods in the woods. I love that phrase. That's awesome. So Yeah. Thanks, Darren. All right. Yeah, you know, nothing's ever perfect. I don't want to mm. make it sound like a, a, a Facebook life where you don't have, you know, your, your ups and downs and stuff. But it's it, things uh, – a friend of mine once said – Life is like a crap sandwich. Um, the the more bread you got, the less you taste of the crap. Yeah. So, so go out and make the money and 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 mind your ABCs. Got it. Hey, Said Tim. that five times now. All right. Well, hey Tim, thanks for uh, taking the time today and and talking. And I look forward to uh, doing it again soon. Excellent, Darren. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, let's touch base. And thanks, listeners. Appreciate you having me on. And I I hope you got some value. All right. And for our listeners, if you like the show, please share the show with someone you know. It's easy to do. So share the show. That's all we've got this week. Until next time, thanks for listening to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio.